across the world. One in four children lives in a country affected by conflict or disaster. Girls and boys face daily risks that threaten their lives and their future physical and mental health. Communities play an essential role in preventing and responding to risks children face in humanitarian settings. While it may not always be visible to child protection actors, communities organize themselves in all sorts of ways to promote children's well-being and protect them from violence, abuse, neglect, and exploitation. As child protection actors, it's our job to work alongside community members in their response to children's needs. Take Nina, for example. She's a 14-year-old girl who was recently displaced by conflict in her country and now lives in a camp. Nina loves football, but she hasn't played since she left home. One day, Nina sees some children playing football in a vacant lot, and she has an idea. She gathers a group of friends and supportive adults together to clean up the lot and organize practices for local children. Soon, Nina, her friends, and several community members are coaching two teams. They don't have much, but Nina looks forward to this every day, and the children love it too. As child protection actors arrive at the camp, they move quickly to address mental health concerns, setting up safe spaces in that same vacant lot, and employing facilitators from outside the community. Nina and her friends are confused and disappointed about losing their space, but they don't know who to turn to. How could child protection actors use a stronger community-level approach? In 2019, the Alliance for Child Protection in Humanitarian Action published a new edition of the Minimum Standards for Child Protection. Standard 17, Community-Level Approaches, outlines key actions and guidance notes to ensure children live in communities that promote their well-being and prevent and respond to violence, abuse, neglect and exploitation against children. While there is no one-size-fits-all model, Standard 17 outlines key actions and guidance to working alongside communities. These actions include carrying out a context analysis to understand the social norms and attitudes towards children in the community and to identify potential sources of risk that may not support the best interests of children. Standard 17 says we need to build relationships with community members, caregivers and children like Nina who are promoting children's rights, healthy development and well-being. This will help us to jointly identify those who play important roles in children's protection, prioritize and address child protection issues, define responsibilities in community-level action, and better support children and families at risk. Now, let's return to the child protection actors in Nina's camp. Imagine they use child-friendly communication skills to listen to what Nina, her friends and community members have started. By acknowledging the amazing work Nina has done and asking her what they can do to better support children in her community. Nina feels a sense of satisfaction and belonging. Through a trusting relationship, the child protection actors help Nina and her community to grow her project. The minimum actions in Standard 17 encourage collaboration with community members and children. This helps us to identify protection strategies that work find areas to improve, get feedback during and after the response, and adjust activities where we need to. This gives us a better chance at supporting community-owned solutions that truly protect children.